Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, which premium booster packs are the best buy? Premium booster packs have come in many forms throughout the years, from the now discontinued Masters series to the new Collector Boosters. Premium packs typically cost more than a regular draft booster, but also contain more. More reprints, more exclusive cards, special alternate artwork, frames, foils, and, as many Magic the Gathering players hope, value. But which is the best buy for the player with a Benjamin or two burning a hole in their wallet? Please note, because premium packs in particular rise in cost and quickly command a pretty price, this video will examine the three most recent premium packs. Throne of Eldraine Collector Boosters, previous to which Modern Horizons was the premium pack, previous to which it was Ultimate Masters. Now, at the time of release, these three premium packs had the following price per pack. For Modern Horizons, Wizards of the Coast was asking $6.99 per pack, though at the time, initial demand did mean that the average price was often closer to $9.99 per pack. For Ultimate Masters, Wizards of the Coast asked $13.99 per booster pack. For Throne of Eldraine Collector Boosters, Wizards of the Coast did away with transparency, and so no MSRP was stated. However, due to the fact that this item was sold at big box stores like Walmart, as well as sold on Amazon, the product was revealed to have an expected price of $25 per pack, making it the highest priced premium booster pack Wizards of the Coast has ever produced. But what are they going for today? Now, Anytime we are dealing with packs on the secondary market, there's going to be some fluctuation. There's always deals to be had, after all, and high prices to be pinched. For this video, I am going to use pricing from Card Kingdom, which is the sponsor of this channel, but just as a baseline. If your local game store or even your big box retailer has a different price, please insert it and do the math accordingly. While there may be some fluctuation in the amount of dollars from store to store, I think that you will still find all three premium options remain relative to one another. For example, if your local game store is asking a little bit more for Modern Horizons than the price I show here, chances are that they are probably asking more for the other two with a similar proportion. So, as of the filming of this video, Modern Horizons packs can be found for $5.49 each. Ultimate Masters booster packs can be found for $19.99 each. And Throne of Eldraine Collector's Boosters can be found for $27.99 each. This means that one Collector Booster equals five Modern Horizons Booster Packs, or just about 1.5 Ultimate Masters Booster Packs. Or I suppose one Collector Booster equals one Ultimate Master and one Modern Horizon Booster Pack each. But let's start there with the basics. In isolation of another and in isolation of price. Now, I do have a complete and highly detailed is it worth it to buy video for each of these three premium products, but in examining them at present, they can be broken down as follows. Ultimate Masters, the final Masters set for the foreseeable future, contains 100% reprints, 15 cards per pack, one foil per pack, draftable, highly regarded as an excellent draft experience, which is unfortunate in a way since it is and was and has always been and will probably always be an extremely expensive draft experience. While well, the emphasis in Ultimate Masters is on modern, some staples of Commander and even Legacy did appear in this set. Indeed, high-end cards included in this set are Liliana of the Veil, Cavern of Souls, Karn Liberated, Snapcaster Mage, Tarmogoyf, Mana Vault, Dark Depths, Demonic Tutor, and many, many more, making this a fairly universally appealing set for players of Commander, players of Legacy, players of Modern, and, if you've got the cash, Limited. Now, what about Modern Horizons? We can say this contains a mix of brand new cards and Legacy reprints, all of which became Modern Legal upon the set's release. 15 cards per pack, plus one full art snow-covered land per pack. Draft 
draftable as well and highly regarded as an excellent draft experience. That draft experience was more expensive than a regular booster draft, but significantly less than an Ultimate Masters. Well, the emphasis again here is on modern. All reprints from the set are cards prior to modern legality. In other words, legacy reprints. And the brand new cards have modern intended power levels, which actually made quite a few relevant in both Legacy and Commander. Indeed, high-end cards included Renan 6, Urza, Lord High Artificer, Pact of Negation, Prismatic Vista, Yogmoth, Thran Physician, The First Sliver, Morophon, The Boundless, and New Sword and Horizon Land Cycles, making this to a fairly universally appealing set for Commander, Legacy, Modern, and Limited. And then we have the most recent premium product of packs, which are Collector Boosters. And again, I do feel I want to stress that these are the most expensive of the three. These contain only cards from the current standard set. 15 cards per pack, one foil token per pack. Of those 15, one is to be a rare or mythic with extended art, one will be a foil rare or mythic in the regular frame, nine will be foil commons and foil uncommons in the regular frame, and three will be special frame cards, predominantly non-foil, though occasionally foil, almost always in the showcase frame, but in extreme rarity, the borderless planeswalkers, as well as one ancillary card, such as a card from a planeswalker deck, or a brawl deck, or the buy a box promo, and collector booster packs are not draftable, and Wizards of the Coast has been quite vocal that drafting with these will not provide a draft experience that they would endorse as representative of the limited format. So this is ultimately a $25 pack of standard cards, most of which are foiled and one of which has an extended art frame. The extended art frame, as I have covered before, is not actually extended and is instead a stretched version with a brushed away border. Any cards from a collector booster that would see play in modern, legacy, or commander would simply be the normal ratio of cards from a current set that might find homes in those formats. It is essentially a product for standard, made up of standard cards. So let's say you were sitting here with about $30 that is burning a hole in your pocket. Which of these premium booster packs is the best pickup? One Eldraine collector booster or five to six Modern Horizon booster packs? Or just one Ultimate Masters with 10 bucks left over? Do you wanna buy another Modern Horizon pack with that? Or maybe cough up another 10 on top of that 30 to pick up two Ultimate Masters packs instead? What's the best buy? Obviously, this is going to be highly subjective depending on your needs as a player. If you play Commander, then you might view the value in these premium pack options differently than someone who plays Modern, than someone who plays Legacy and Pioneer. Let's open these packs and discuss, but remember, this is only my perspective, and the one that counts is your own. Also, whether I open high-end cash now or 50 cent jank, remember that too is not necessarily indicative of what you are going to get by buying and opening these packs. In my evaluation, the Modern Horizons packs are overwhelmingly the best value of the three premium pack options. At $5.50 per pack, this is very close to the typical $4 over-the-counter cost of standard draft packs. And there's so much more potential value in these. I still wish this set had been sold at the Battle Bond slash Conspiracy special set pricing, but I also feel very confident that this current price of $5.50 just isn't going to last. And it is probably a blip that is the result of Pioneer shaking the community's confidence on the modern format. Matt. Feel free to check out my own Pioneer videos here and here, though I'm still doing modern deck techs. Now, let me point out that these Modern Horizon packs are far from just modern cards. In fact, at the time of release, Modern Horizons was jokingly called Commander Horizons because of how much Commander players had in terms of goodies in here. The Horizon Lands, as well as Prismatic Vista, are all excellent for Commander mana bases. Some of the biggest ticket cards that I mentioned earlier and a few more from the first Sliver to Morophon to Yogmoth to Urza, a host of other legendary commanders, let alone lower end goodies in here. Grab a generous gift or scale up with Archmage's Charm, Tribute Mage, and so on and on. And that's another really important point on both the Modern Horizons and the Ultimate Masters packs. 
In the Throne of Eldraine Collector Booster, aside from the rare and mythic cards, you're getting Foil Jank. It's a bunch of foil commons and uncommons from Eldraine, or in the case of the upcoming Collector Booster from Theros Beyond Death. How many of those cards in the common to uncommon slot are going in your commander deck? They're certainly not going into your modern one, Legacy, probably not even Pioneer or Popper. Meanwhile, in Ultimate Masters, you're cracking cards like Eternal Witness at Uncommon. And going back to Modern Horizons, even the common slot has stuff like Ephemerate and Arkham's Astrolabe. I mean, it's not going to all be value and it's not going to all be playable, but overwhelmingly both Modern Horizons and Ultimate Masters has a better shot of having cards at any level that are either going to be of interest to you or perhaps just interest to trade for cards that are of interest to you. And considering that both of those are much more inexpensive than a collector booster, I am amazed that someone would spend their money on a collector booster when they have the option of picking these other premium packs up instead. Now, a long time ago, Wizards of the Coast offered what might have been considered their first premium booster pack, and that was during Shards of Alara. I actually have an extremely old video here where I crack one of those premium Alara packs open, but basically they were Shards of Alara packs, but all foil. The sticker price was $11.99 each, or three times the cost of a booster pack. And I feel that the Eldraine Collector Booster is more in line with that product than it is with a Master's product. Yes, the Collector Booster does have multiple rares and a special lottery ticket slot for a chance at winning something epic like a Borderless Planeswalker foil, but the average pack of a Collector Booster is just an all-foil Eldraine Booster Pack with an extra rare, and instead of $11.99, as the Alara premium packs were, we're in the $25 to $30 level. I feel like these maybe should have been 100% borderless cards in them. Like, that's a great way to encourage people to buy them en masse to bling out their collection. Gotta catch them all after all. Oh no, wait, that's a different IP. But make the ratio of cards like normal boosters too, so they are still draftable. And just have it so it's the only place to get borderless cards. Do the whole set borderless in that special showcase frame maybe, or guarantee a borderless full art land in each pack. And even then, even then, $25 to $30 is, I feel, too much to ask. To be perfectly honest, if booster packs are still $4 each like they were during Shards of Alara, which they are, then I say $11.99 is where to price these collector boosters at today. I do also feel it is necessary to note that collector boosters appear to be more prone to extreme curling of their foil cards, of which they are predominantly made up of. I do appreciate that commenting on something like this is somewhat, if not highly anecdotal, but as an MTG YouTuber who has opened a significant amount of product, both of collector boosters, regular Eldraine packs, um, Ultimate Masters packs, Modern Horizons packs, every Masters packs, I open all the packs, thank you Booster Box game, I have seen a lot of cards. And not to mention my own personal obsession with the game all adds up to, I'm gonna comment that collector boosters foils curl way more than any other foil I've seen. And I can demonstrate this right here because the footage you saw of me opening that Throne of Eldraine booster pack was 30 hours before the footage I'm showing now. I left them out on my desk. That's it. My office is climate controlled 24 seven. And look at this. I knew this was going to happen because I'd opened a lot of these and because many, many Magic the Gathering players have contacted me saying that the curling of their collector booster cards was this extreme. Now, I don't think we can prevent or solve curling, but there is a dramatic difference here. And if you do open a collector booster pack, do what I did with my murderous rider foil, put it in a perfect fit sleeve immediately. Final conclusion. Currently, at only $5.50 per pack and containing many high-value cards relevant in multiple non-rotating formats, Modern Horizons Premium Booster Packs are the best value for your dollar of these, the three most recent Premium Booster sets. Ultimate Masters is a distant second. There's many more high-end cards, and those cards have a higher ceiling overall. But at $20 a pack, 
you are only buying one to two per half dozen of Horizons. If all prices were equal, yeah, Ultimate Masters would overwhelmingly be the best buy. And I've advocated for years for all prices to be equal in booster packs. Imagine they sold the Masters once at $4 each. Imagine the drafts that could have been held. Imagine the affordability of modern that would have occurred. Imagine the long-term sustainability, the player engagement and interest. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. Where are I? Oh, final conclusion, okay. But at four times the cost, I have ranked it second. Throne of Eldraine collector boosters are only providing standard cards, and though some of those may find homes in formats like Commander or Pioneer, you are essentially paying five to eight times the price of a normal draft booster for cards that can be found in a normal draft booster. Save maybe, like, a Brawl card. Arcane Signet is five bucks. Go down to your local game store and buy one. Given the extremely high price and extremely low return, as well as the noticeably, incredibly noticeably low quality of the cards themselves in terms of curling, I feel collector boosters should probably be avoided entirely. And I feel that goes for Theros Beyond Death collector boosters as well. But now I want to hear from you. Do you agree with my assessment of these three premium booster products, or would you prioritize the packs in a different order? Let me know in the comments below. But either way, I hope very much that this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to hit that like button, by leaving that comment, especially by hitting subscribe and ringing the bell, or just sharing this video with a friend. This deck is about filling our yard as fast as possible to hit as many payoff cards as possible. A payoff card is one that will benefit from being sent to the graveyard or benefit for having a large yard. Deathright Shaman is a powerhouse one drop who is banned in not only modern but also legacy. But Deathright is perfectly legal in Pioneer. 